as kids, all right, think back to when you were a kid, you probably don't remember this, all right? But as parents, all right, think back with your own kids, you certainly do. Hey, Dad, what's this? I don't know. Bring it here. Let me see it. It's right here, Dad. Hold it up where I can see it. No, I can't hold it up. It's down here. Okay, let me come down there with you. All right? See, a bird's eye view is great for certain things, but up and up close, a ground level view is something else, isn't it? All right? In a nutshell, that's what Zacchaeus learns in the gospel story today. Usually we miss this story in our Sunday readings because it always falls between Reformation and All Saints Sundays. And in missing this story, we never move beyond a children's Sunday school understanding of it. Right? And we're not going to sing it, but surely anyone my age or older remembers that old Sunday school song, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he, right? And so this idea of coming down, coming down here is going to be our theme for the next few weeks. See, in life, you and I know, whether we want to admit it's a different issue, but we all, we all know that we're always trying to get a leg up on and step over others rather than coming down off our own high horses and soapboxes to serve them. Now, this series will wrap up on Christ the King Sunday when we celebrate that last day when Jesus will indeed rend the heavens and come down here again to judge the living and the dead. Jesus tells us that the greatest among all in his kingdom is the servant of all, just as he came to serve, not be served. Perhaps another way to say this is that the apocalypse, right, the eschaton, the end times, the last days, they start at home, just as salvation came to Zacchaeus' home. We already mentioned, today is also our celebration of Reformation Sunday, uh, commemorating that historical day when Martin Luther, Pastor Martin Luther, Professor Martin Luther, posted his 95 theses, right, or debate points on the Wittenberg Church door. Now, this was sort of the talk radio or podcasting of his day, all right? So he made this list of 95 pointed, loaded, biased statements looking for a debate partner among the other university faculty and staff types that were around the town. And it turns out that the, this document, the 95 Theses, was the first instance of what today we would say media, of, of media going viral, is the way we would say it today, because the local printers got a hold of the document and started running off copies and passing them out, and it spread everywhere, seemingly all at once. And since then, that this was the day that Martin Luther sort of had his breakout moment to become an influencer, right, that's what we use today. Uh, we mark this day, Reformation, uh, the, the day of the posting of the 95 Theses, as the beginning of the Reformation. There's a lot of different ways to parse the Reformation. Of course, we only have a few minutes up here to do so. So in keeping with our theme, from a certain perspective, at least as the Reformation begins, all right, so from a certain perspective, the Reformation calls the medieval church to come down from its high, lofty heights, to return from those massive building projects and payola schemes, to return from its ever more complicated theologies and philosophies, to return from its works righteousness and notions of power and glory, and to once again go to God's people, seeing their everyday lives and their need for Jesus, his words of life, his grace, mercy, and love. In fact, that call to come down to ground level remains important for the church in every age. Today's ground level looks a lot more like what we've discussed with Pastor Greg Finke in his book, Joining Jesus. As he says, we need to get up off our pews, right, and do what Jesus is already doing for the kingdom. 
which is loving and caring about neighbors out there who are not in here with us yet. Now, Zacchaeus is a tax collector. And if you look at your study and share inserts there on the pink paper today, that'll explain that a little bit to you, right? People have always hated the tax man. Of all times and ages, people have always hated the tax man. But in Bible days, fellow Jews who worked for the oppressive invading Roman Empire, collecting money for it, were viewed uh, as especially despicable. They were particularly hated. And long story short, the tax man got a commission on the taxes collected. Right? Just like today, we go write our avalorum tax. We pay it out personally to the tax collector, right? Same idea in those days. And so Zacchaeus had a vested interest in making sure your tax bill was as high as possible. And all tax collectors did. So that allowed for a lot of corruption in the system. And although the Bible story does not straightforwardly accuse Zacchaeus of being a cheater, sort of one of those things that everybody knows, true or not. And no wonder the crowd is scandalized and accusatory when Jesus picks Zacchaeus, just as question number three on your same sheet invites you to consider of course, we remember last week's story about the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. And so we like to pat ourselves in the back. Lord, I thank thee that I am not like these other people. We build ourselves up with our privileges, our possessions, our pride. Heaping these things up until we stand up high on them and can look down at our neighbors. Right? For instance, during election season... We all know that we look down our noses at the yards with the wrong signs in them, don't we? Well, I would never support such a, you know, you can fill in the blank for yourself. And what's more is, as a culture, right, we live in debt up to our eyeballs solely so that we have things to impress other people we don't know and don't like with fancy stuff. And indeed, in a group like this, we know how to work the system. No, not the welfare system, but the system of education, and employment benefits, and retirement accounts to get a leg up on everyone else. However, as we've said many times before, that corporate ladder, right, that stairway to the heaven, the corporate ladder doesn't go all the way to the top, the stairway doesn't go all the way to heaven. And what's more, that the people whose shoes we really find ourselves standing in, it's not Zacchaeus, it's the crowd, filled with jealousy and envy and coveting and more. That someone like that hated Zacchaeus is getting a bigger, better deal than we are. We think that we deserve the Savior's presence at our house, much more than those other people out there, while we cling ever more tightly to everything we've got, afraid that someone undeserving will get our stuff and smugly agree that someone like Zacchaeus, he's the one who should give up his stuff. Well, Jesus' words to Zacchaeus apply to us too, don't they? Come down here, not down out of a fig tree. For us, but down off our high horses, our soapboxes, and the like. Zacchaeus had to come down not merely because Jesus said so, but because seeing Jesus up close is quite different than seeing him at a distance. Right? Seeing Jesus face to face, eyeball to eyeball, is quite different than a bird's eye view. Lots of people, both inside and outside the church, only ever have an overview of Jesus because they've never joined him in anything that he's doing. Now, whether it's our moralistic self-understanding or our earthly possessions, our social connections, Jesus doesn't need or ask us to raise ourselves up to his level. Besides, we can't get there from here anyway. 
And so he comes down from heaven above to us here on earth below to bring salvation to our homes, to make us children of Abraham through holy baptism, and to call us into a life of giving and serving. Zacchaeus sees for himself that Jesus is not merely a great moral philosopher and teacher. He's not merely a traveling roadshow miracle worker. And he's not another Pharisee selling, peddling, or hawking religious lifestyles and goods. Jesus is nothing less than God's own Son sent to us to bring us God's own righteousness. As St. Paul writes, in divine forbearance, passing over sins previously committed, so that all who receive him in faith receive his gifts of being made right with God. Jesus isn't someone to be admired from a distance, or someone we assert to our we assert that we know better than because things are different nowadays. He's God's salvation for us here, now, in everyday life. And he wants to come to your house today. Salvation comes to Zacchaeus by faith. Because that's the only way it can happen, of course. It is by believing that Jesus is who he says he is and delivers on his promise. That's faith. Namely, that he's God in the flesh, God's own son, giving us forgiveness of sins and failures, new life over sickness and death, and salvation from the devil and evil. Zacchaeus does not earn these things from his hospitality toward Jesus or his giving away and making restitution out of his fortune. They're gifts which cause Zacchaeus to give from himself. However, however, Zacchaeus doesn't leave these gifts as high, lofty ideals to which he sometimes aspires. Zacchaeus welcomes Jesus into his home, into his everyday life. He doesn't leave Jesus in some little part of his thoughts and feelings. And honestly, that's the hardest part for us, isn't it? We've been in that crowd around Jesus nearly all of our lives. We've wondered, we've complained how some other people seem to have him stay at their house why can't we do the same? Well, the answer is, we have to come down where Jesus is to get off our high horses, our soap boxes, our ivory towers, our tough guy, tough gal fortresses, our towers and stairways to heaven and the like. We have to see for ourselves who Jesus is through worship, prayer, Bible reading, and serving in the baptized, believing body of Christ, especially the prayer and the Bible reading. So we need to picture in our mind's eye, picture in our hearts, that he's physically, actually present with us in these activities. We need to imagine that it's his voice we hear narrating the Bible to us. We need to envision that he is there with us watching our daily lives, not to scold us or catch us doing wrong, but to guide us and to protect us like Psalm 23. Now, none of that makes Jesus a figment of our imaginations. Rather, by exercising our hearts and minds this way, it trains them to notice and to listen to our spirits already enlivened by, the <clears throat> already enlivened by faith from the author and giver of life. It's how we see Jesus in everyday life. And then it becomes how people see Jesus in our own everyday lives. Zacchaeus' great financial gift and restitution are not high, lofty ideals to which one sometimes ought aspire. They show and tell others about the power of Jesus to restore and redeem one's own life. It's the same for us. Having heard his call, <laughs> his call to come down here, to see him face to face, to hear him, to welcome him, to stay in our homes, it's how we know Jesus. And to give of our lives in caring and serving for others is how they will know of his living presence in our lives. Amen.